This is Johan Gamble. We're back playing Gadelka last time. We were traveling through the monastery, and um, we are going to fight another boss. Uh, I don't know if this is a... It's like a mini boss. Anyways, we're fighting another boss. Here we have doppelgangers. We have the th our three main characters, Shadows. So we have them. Um, and each one's slightly a little different from one another. Not by much, but they're relatively similar. So we have Doppelganger uh, Kadoka, which is level 10, HP 784, MP 44. Um, I think she has the least amount of health. Yeah, she has the least amount of health out of all the Doppelgangers. Um, and she absorbs light. And all their bios are born from the darkness of the monastery. It is the embodiment of Kadoka's loneliness and the reflection of her desire to be loved. And then we have the... Um, Doppelganger James, which is uh, the one that's hiding in the corner, level 10, uh, HP 841, MP 40, also absorbs light. Born from the darkness of the monastery, it is the embodiment of James's disdain and reflection of his desire for salvation. And in the final one, which is uh, Doppelganger Edwards, he has the most life, um, but he's also level 10, and he has 961 HP, and his MP is 14, so he mostly just attacks physically. Um, Kadoka attacks magically, and Edward, uh, James attacks magically a lot. He's actually probably the most troublesome out of all the, um, doppelgangers. But Edward's bio is also born from the darkness of the monastery. It is the embodiment of Edward's stubbornness and the reflection of his desire for adventure. So yeah, this fight isn't too hard, but if you're not careful, it can be tricky. I'd say, obviously get rid of, like, Kadoka and James first, I mean of Edward first, just because they're kind of right in your face, um, and then you can just kind of gang up on Edward, because um, he goes down, he's he's annoying well no, I'm sorry, James, James is the most annoying one, because his magic is probably the strongest um, yeah he's the most annoying, but um, other than that though, it's not too hard interesting enough though the word doppelganger is actually kind of a cool word, because um it's funny, because whenever I hear people use doppelganger in, like, a sentence, they always say, like, evil doppelganger, but that's kind of redundant, because doppelganger is itself means evil, cl it's like an evil clone of someone, so saying evil doppelganger would just be an evil, evil clone, which is a little redundant, but doppelganger comes from the German word, is a German word, I believe, and it's a word for double walkers, and it's regarded as bringers of bad luck, and seeing one's own doppelganger is said to be an omen of one's death, so... Yeah, they're not friendly, but um, this fight isn't too hard. Just keep bashing away at them. And like I said, though, James is probably the most annoying because he hides in the corner um, and does some pretty decent magic damage. But other than that, though, not too bad. But um, as you can see, though, Edward deals with them pretty easy, and the Kadoka one isn't that bad either. She has some magic, but it's nothing too bad. Anyways, I'm just using healing items because... Um, James's magic is pretty shitty, so his healing magic won't do very much. He just, I, I make James strictly use just items for healing, and then Kadoka uses her magic for healing, and it works out pretty well. Um, I mean, it, it can be a little troublesome if you don't have a lot of items on you, but with my high luck rate, I get a lot of items. Plus, there's, this game's pretty kind about leaving a lot of items around, so even though that you, even though you don't have a gift, uh, like a, I'm gonna say gift shop, a shop you can buy more items at, it's nothing too, um, cumbersome. And there he's using Geyser. Does a pretty decent amount of damage to the boys, but not much to the girls. So, she's fine. Again, her pie, her piety is so high, it doesn't, most magic doesn't do anything to her. The only time magic's kind of annoying is if it can, like, poison, silence, or paralyze her. Um, silence is the most annoying, though. But, yeah, they're just trying to get Kadoka a little closer so she can do some serious damage with her magic. And I'm still upgrading her magic. I think her, yeah, her flare should be leveling up very soon. And I will be doing some off-screen grinding um, at the end of this part because we'll come to an enemy that allows us to do a bunch of grinding really easily. We don't get any experience from it, but, I mean, our magic and our weapon abilities get experience, but our levels don't get experience because you technically cannot beat this character. It's an unbeatable character. No matter what, you can never actually beat it. So, yeah. And just gonna keep using, like, Fortify Strength on G uh, Edward just because... It should level up pretty soon, and it's it's pretty useful. I usually try and get them to level... 
I mean, you don't have to get them to level 3. I think level 2 is pretty good enough, because once you get it to level 2, it raises its AP by 6, and then level 3 is AP by 9. So, um, I mean, if I ever get the chance to, I'd like to get it to level 3, but it's not like a super, like, oh, I won't... This game, this will make the game, like, a thousand times easier. It makes it a little easier, but it's nothing, like, super, like, ugh, you got, you can't beat the game without it, so. Yeah. One thing that's been kind of funny is I've been really taking a huge liking to spears in this playthrough. I used them at the very end of my last practice run a little bit, but during this playthrough, um, I've been having J uh, Edward use a whole bunch of spears because I've been getting so many spear drops from enemies, so it's been really nice. Yeah, his er uh, James, uh, the Doppler, the Doppelganger James's um, Earth Magic is actually pretty decent damage, mainly because though, just Edward and James don't have high pi. Uh, pi, uh, magic, I'm just gonna say magical defense. They don't have very high magical defense, so they take a relatively decent amount of damage from it. Um, I am gonna get James's magic defense up a little more because because he uses um, the um, the spells that the the buff spells because he uses the buff spells. They are a bit expensive, so I do want to raise them. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but if he used the um, uh, fortify spells on enemies, it actually decreases their ability. I don't know if I ever mentioned that, but it does, which is actually pretty useful. So James can also debuff and buff characters, which is pretty damn useful. And fortunately, no more. Oh, I'm still just using cheese, yeah. That's the only thing that's kind of annoying is if, you know, you have to rely on items for healing with uh, James, which isn't always the best. Um, I mean, it's serviceable for maybe the beginning of the game, but it's not the best. But uh, thankfully, though, Kadelka will her um, help her magic her uh, healing magic will level up. Not in this part, uh, not in the next part, but by the end of the next part, she'll have level two. Uh, most of her magic will be level two by then, so that's good. Because I, I don't... One thing, I don't actually know if level 2 magic does more damage. What I think it does is it just spreads out. So if you have an enemy next to another enemy and you use, like, a flare level 2, it just hits them. It just hits the enemy next to them as well. And then if you use a healing spell level 2, it heals allies next to them. I think... I'm not sure if it does more damage or less. I don't actually know if the levels do. I know they cause spread, but I don't know if the damage increases. It might. I never actually really thought about it before. But, oh, well, that was the doppelganger. Nothing too hard, just a little time-consuming. But other than that, nothing too bad. And I'm putting more points into agility because Kadoka... Uh, what am I? Yeah, because Kadoka is a bit slow for my taste. And I'm putting more into her luck. Yeah, definitely more into their agility because, yeah. More into vitality. Spreading them out a little more. And you get the eye icon earrings, a uh, high potion, and I think that was Panacea. So yeah, Panacea is pretty useful. Nope, wrong thing. Nope, wrong thing. There you go. So we got the icon's earrings. So a medium side. Yep, this restores HP. Some good old wine. Another uh set of decorative statue pieces and then the, the red glass part we got in the last part that I didn't look at now this is to solve a puzzle it's not you don't need to do this this is a hundred percent optional um, okay that was a boss because there's a healing spring here and whenever there's a healing spring it's always considered a boss um, so anyways if you put the glass into this um, tapestry or whatever it reveals the number seven zero three eight and if you remember there's a chest on the t uh, on the higher floor and we can go ahead and get that the item in there is completely um optional but yeah did you see all those bodies be quite a party if they were alive They've probably been abandoned for hundreds of years. Must be some fascinating old stories. I saw some pretty fresh ones, too. One who was shot. One who'd been cracked in the head with an axe. And some with no visible signs of injury. They must have been poisoned. I bet the new ones were fortune seekers like us. That old couple must you have... You mean to tell me they killed all those people? Rubbish! All those deaths are rubbish? They're all liars and thieves anyway. 
This is still a monastery. This is still God's house, prison or no. Why all those liars and heathens are killed is none of my concern. How could you possibly say a thing like that? That doesn't sound very priestly. I am not a priest. I am a bishop. I don't give a rat's ass what you are. Look, I'm not saying that all of those people were saints, okay? But that doesn't mean that they should be put to death. You that old couple. They're so well-mannered, kind. You think they're killers? Good manners? Yes. Think about it. Why would they leave the place such a mess? I don't know. You think they'd at least bury the body? Possibly. Anyway, I have this strange feeling we're not alone with all these bodies and ghosts. You'd better keep your mouths shut. If you want to live. We'll be back with Kadoka and the Bickering Three. <laughs> they bicker so much, but I gotta, I gotta agree with um, Edward on this one, James. I mean, you're you're definitely being really naive here. I mean, we've just, I don't, I don't get it. Like, it's like, okay, this, this is a shitty monastery. Okay, obviously some fucked up shit happened here, so who cares? But um. There, there comes a point when you just gotta stop, like, lying to yourself. But, uh, whatever. Anyways, though, this item that we can get in the chest is optional. Um, it is just a letter, but it does kind of give us an even better idea about how messed up this place truly is. Because, uh, I mean, if you haven't noticed, this place is pretty messed up. Anyways, we have a new enemy here. One new enemy. The Ghoul, Ghoul A. Ghoul A is a level 10 to level 30, HP 578 to 1764, MP 10, absorbs darkness. I think this might be the first enemy we've run across that doesn't absorb light. Every enemy we've run across absorbs light, it's crazy. Um, so the remnant flesh of a dead man, it seeks only to consume the living and sustain its disintegrating husk of a body. So yeah, not that hard, they're not too dangerous, just poke it with your spear and it should go down rarely. Easy. And then there's a glory hand right there, but those aren't really dangerous. Oh, they move creepy, though. It's like, James, come on. This place is obviously evil, and those and that couple's obviously evil, too. I mean, the fact that they've been able to survive here that long must mean that there's something weird about them. Either they're, like, some serious, like, Van Saint, like, some, I don't know, Van Helsen, whatever, demon hunter kind of people... Or they're evil too, and the monsters just don't mess with them because they're like evil as well, so I don't know. I like how he lumbers. He's like, oh! I really do like this game's soundtrack. I heard that some people didn't like it. I actually like it quite a lot. Boom, boom, boom. Take some pistols. Damn. Now that's some, that's some zombie hunting right there. James has been playing his Resident Evil. Good for him. He probably likes it. And I don't think we get a level up from that. Or any items. Sometimes this game does take a long time to load in between stuff. I'm always like... It almost feels like it's always freezing, which is kind of like... Ugh. But, oh yeah. Thankfully, we got a lot of pistol rounds. And Anyways, coming back to the store. Now, I'm kind of a moron, so I forgot what the code was. It's 703A. But I forgot what it was. So I had to, um run all the way back down there to remember it. Uh, the code is always the same, though. So if you know the code beforehand, I think you can just get into it without having to put the glass in. Um, but I forgot. Anyway, so like I said, this is an optional item. You do not have to get this. It's just a diary. But um, as I said before, it really does kind of give us an idea about the going-ons in this monastery because as we learned in the previous parts this place was also a prison um but we learn a little bit through this guard's writing that what kind of work that was being carried on here in the nimton prisons yeah It is a pretty foreboding place, and it only gets worse and worse as we continue through the game. <laughs> so yeah, this part is a little long just because I do go through all the kind of slow... I, I want you, If you want to read it, you can pause it, or you can always go to the Wikipedia and look there too. But I think... I, I, do, I do appreciate that 
they give you the chance to look through the this. Built as a house of God. <laughs> that is pretty ironic. Yeah, a lot of people died here. A lot of people died here with not a lot of care for them. And again, though, I mean, I think Edward does make a good point. Even though a lot of the people who were, we just recently saw killed were like thieves trying to get whatever treasure was left in the monastery, James himself is also looking for something here, he's told us in the beginning. So he himself is also, in, an, in a sense, a thief because this is not his home and he's coming to take something that doesn't belong to him. Because um, he said he's looking for something now. Maybe he's looking for a person, or maybe he's looking for an item. We do not know at the moment, but he said he's here for something. Which kind of gives the idea that he too is stealing something that doesn't really belong to him. Yeah, instead of... That's pretty, that's pretty terrible. Instead of killing the people who want to die, you just keep torturing them. Why would he go to such a place? Well, this guy seems to be a family man. Yep, oh, and there, talking about the wedding dress. That's the mummy's bride that we killed in the last episode, I believe. Yeah, that we got the earth magic from. And it seems like the guard himself definitely feels like he is guilty of doing such terrible things and should not... Re should not deserve any kindness from his savior or God. Which is interesting. When you get to that point where you feel that you are of no point of redemption. Hmm. Yeah, he's he's definitely he's definitely losing it. I guess he would deteriorate mentally after torturing people for so long. And looks like the the prisoners are free and are killing people. It looks like the guards are now the ones being hunted and fleeing for their lives, while the prisoners are the hunters dishing out what they feel is their justice. And it sounds like the guard can hear footsteps out his door, and that was the final part of his journal. So yep, definitely some terrible things went on in this monastery. And for what we don't know, it was said to be a prison, but I'm not, I don't really know a lot about the prison or justice system, but I'm sure torturing probably isn't allowed. I, I, I feel like that's a really naive thing for me to say, because while I think it's probably not allowed, it probably does happen to some certain extent. Again, I don't know anything about it. I don't want to throw any shade because I don't know. So I can't say one way or another, but I'm pretty sure... It's usually not a... It's probably not cool to torture people. Uh, anyways, this is just a dead end. I don't even think there's any items down this way. So, and of course, all these torches are well-maintained. My goodness. Must be the old couple. Or I guess maybe monsters know how to light torches. They got like a little flint box. It's making me think of um, King's Quest VI with the Minotaur and Alexander's little flint box. <laughs> Alexander pulls out his magic map. Kudos. Oh, Did and he pulled out a cutscene. No. Nothing, but... Whoa! Who's that? Hmm. Some person. Well, now we are ourselves in a jail cell. Now, this part always really confuses me on how to get out. It's... Not hard to get out, but I always have a hard time remembering exactly how to do it. But we did get a level up, which is nice, and I am putting more into luck because, again, luck is really good. And mind is really important, too. I need to... I start putting more mind into James because his mind is really low, and that's bad because that means his magic won't have a good chance of hitting us, which is bad because we want his magic to boost us. So anyways, what you need to do before you can actually get out of here to activate a cutscene is you need to grab two items that are hidden and you need to look at this pile of bodies so I just passed by right now but there's I, there's an item kind of in the corner there's a um, pistol ammo and I think an antidote and then after you look at the bodies and grab those two items you go to the um no it's panacea you go no it's antidote 
Is it? I think it's antidote. Yeah, you go to the bars over there, and then uh, then you can continue on. Yep, antidote. And I think this is the first time we got an antidote, or have we had it before? I'm not sure. But anyways, though, once that's done, we can go ahead and head over to these bars so that we can continue on with the story. But you have to look at those two items first. Grab those two items first and look at the um, corpses before you can actually continue on. Otherwise, you're just stuck in here. And the items, you can't even see them. They're, like, invisible, so it's kind of annoying. But it's not the worst thing. Darn! How does it look? You think we can get out? I don't think so. You'd need the strength of a bear to break those bars with your hands. What do you mean we can't get out? How hard can it be? Why don't you ask these guys? Damn it! Did you see that? Someone's in here. Will you shut up and get us out of here? How hard can it be for thieves like you to get us out of a place like this? Try saying that in the East End, holy man. Your severed head would hit the ground before you even finish the thought. This is worthless. I can't believe I'm wasting my time on you. I'm on a mission from God. What a waste. Such a terrible waste. <laughs> my name's Charlotte. I've got a mean day. Not that you have a prayer. I'm talking to three dead people. Nobody's gonna save you. Nobody. So you died here as well? Yes. I died here hundreds and hundreds of years ago. They locked me up in here right after I was born. They beheaded me the day I turned nine. Happy birthday. Oof, that's rough. I've been here ever since, and no one even knows who I am. <laughs> My poor little angel. <laughs> Poor little angel, me? Save your pity for yourself. You'll be dead within three days. Not true. I don't know what your circumstances are, but I know that your mother loved you very, very much. I think you jumped into conclusions, oh, James. You don't know that. I Not every parent loves their child, unfortunately. Name? Where she came from? Nothing. You're telling me that means nothing? From the day I was born, the day I died, no one will ever love me. And I never want to be loved. Just die! All of you! Just die! You know, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine called the Black Swordsman. I think he can really relate to your story. But yeah, though, with that... We go into a boss... Uh, I wouldn't say boss fight, but a mini-boss. But it's not with Charlotte, though. It is with the Jailer, also known as the Nobleman Spirit. So this is the Nobleman Spirit A. You actually can fight another one as a common enemy. This is level 10. Its HP is 1,225. MP 44 absorbs light. The ghost of a prison's former jailer summoned by Charlotte in life. He was cruel and a vindictive man who took pleasure from torturing the inmates. Now in death, he seeks to kill Mame once again. So yep, we have to face the jailer. Not too difficult. Uh, I feel like that's a lot with a lot of enemies though. Not really too difficult. Especially if you allocate your points very specifically and you do a good job. And you train up your magic, it's not that bad. Just gonna shoot a little magic at this guy. Bam! Eat some fire! Look at that. Pretty good damage, and I'm really far away from him, too. If I made Kadoka move closer, I could do even more. And her magic has went up to level 2, so now her flare is even better. Thank goodness. See, there he is using uh, the um, the boosting spells, but he's trying to take away. He's trying to debuff us. Unfortunately, unfortunately for us, he missed, but even if he did hit, it doesn't matter. Kadoka doesn't use physical attacks. She's all magic, baby, all the time. But, yeah. And with James' attack uh, raised a little bit, he should do slightly more damage. 3 AP isn't a ton, but it does do enough to where he can do a little bit more damage, which is always appreciated. And... Gonna move Kadoka up a little bit. There you go. She should be fine. She's. I don't think there's any threat of the jailer really hitting her. And even if he does, she has enough life. I really need to. St what um. What I'm gonna start doing. Nice two shots. What uh. What I start doing is I start putting a lot more um. Of Edward's ability points into his H into his vitality, because he that way he can tank hits way more. 
I want to get his life at least to 9,000. And look, Jailer's done. Super easy. Like, pathetically easy. <laughs> not hard at all. Um, I mean, I guess he could be dang- No, he's not dangerous. He comes right after a save point, too. He's- He's ridiculously easy. Anyways, but we get a level up from that, which is nice. And yeah, putting that into that luck. And agility. So she has more chance to attack. Edward 2. More into agility. And more into agility. And there we go. Mine. Starting to put into the mine. And with that, we get the rifle. That is our first um, heavy uh, two-handed gun. And with the jailer gone, we can escape through this hole that was created through the aftershock of the battle. Of this intense battle. Anyways, though, the rifle is a heavier gun, and it uses its own ammunition. It uses um, rifle rounds. It is stronger than the pistol, and it holds more rounds. It holds 12 rounds. Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely good, but I'm not going to use it quite yet. Just because, obviously, I don't have any rifle rounds, so it's not point. And because it's level 1, he only gets one shot off of it right now. So the pistol is still far more a viable option for um, James. Plus, I just like pistols in general. Anyways, there's two items in here. There is Knuckles. And there's also, if you look on that kind of torture bed, there's um, a, um, a mace, I believe. And I don't know how to get it. I believe I got it before in my previous runs, but I've never been able to grab it again. And I don't know how to get it. Anyways, I just put the water knuckles on Kadoka because this it increased her speed by quite a bit. So, so so her agility is actually quite higher now, which is definitely useful. Definitely want that. Anyways, we come across a new enemy, and this enemy is actually very dangerous. Because this enemy really has a huge crush on Kadoka and loves to attack her specifically. Now, you probably notice he's holding the pistol. And that means he can attack from anywhere. And he is a very crack shot. And because Kadoka doesn't have the best defense, it does a relatively decent amount of damage. As you can see, Kadoka is almost already dead just from the single shot. So he's kind of annoying. And his head looks like a pea. Like, like it looks like a... Um, you know, like, green beans that are, like, in peas? Looks like a pea pod. He's really weird. So, anyways, this is the inverse A. It's level 5 to 30. Its HP is 361 to 1,936. MP 19 to 44. Absorbs light. Um, shade of a former thief who sought to pillage from the monastery. Poison and then shot. He stalks the grounds trapped in his own purgatory. So, thankfully, we got rid of him pretty quickly, but... If you run into him earlier in the game, where you're still kind of limited in abilities, he will shoot the shit out of your characters, and it hurts. Especially Kadoka. Anyways, we got an axe. Uh, I'm, no, I'm not planning to use axes in this playthrough, just because even though they're very strong, they, are also, they also lower your speed by quite a bit. So it's not really something I'm interested in. But if we ever need to use an axe, I mean, if we ever need to use a weapon... And we don't have any others, then yeah. As you can see, you just get a lot of weapons in this game. Um, but yeah, that's a mace right there, I'm pretty sure. And I don't know how to get it. <laughs> I've gotten it before, I'm pretty sure, but never again. But you know what, though? I'm going to end the video here, and we will continue exploring the monastery. So, this has been Yom Gale. Thanks for watching. Bye, then.